guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it is nine o'clock. It is a Monday, which means it's time for a five by five. This is one of my favorite videos of the week. If you haven't seen a five by five before, the idea is very simple. I talk about five completely different subjects. I spend five minutes talking about each subject. Uh, there's a timer at the bottom of the screen. When the timer reaches zero, I move on to the next subject. It's quick, it's snappy. You never know what you're gonna get. However, having said that, you do know what you're gonna have in this one because I'm continuing my Paul Harris series. Uh, we did uh, a, a video of me uh, talking about and performing some of Paul's uh, best tricks. Then in volume two, uh, we looked at even more Paul Harris magic. Well, now we have video number three, back by popular demand. I'm sharing five more Paul Harris tricks that you guys might not have seen before. Now, these particular tricks are from books one and two of the Art of Astonishment series. So it's, uh, if you pick up the Art of Astonishment, you can actually learn these. I'm looking at early Paul Harris as opposed to the Paul Harris present stuff that he brought out later on in his life. Um, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you'd like to see a fourth Paul Harris video, let's be honest, I could I'd probably do this forever with the amount of material that the guy's created and everyone seems to really enjoy these. So as long as you do, I'll carry on doing them for you. Um, anyway, we're gonna get straight into this. I've got some amazing Paul Harris material to share with you. So let's get straight in to the first routine. So guys, the first trick that I want to share with you is called Travelling Triumph. It can be found in Volume 2 of The Art of Astonishments. It was published in uh, Close Up Fantasies in 1980. Uh, anybody who watches this channel regularly will know that I'm a big fan of Triumph. I do a lot of different Triumph routines. This one is really cool because there's so much going on. First of all, you've got a transposition between the condition of a packet of cards. Um, so in other words, one packet shuffled face up into face down, one packet's left normally, and the condition of the cards change places, but that sets you up to have a vanish of the spectator's card. You deal through the entire deck and the card vanishes in a very clean way, then with no moves it actually appears face up in the middle of the deck. And this is a perfect example of the routining behind Paul Harris and why so many of his routines work. They work because the, the structure of the trick makes things so much easier and you're setting things up early in advance. Have a look at the routine and you'll see what I mean. It's called Traveling Triumph. So I say I'm gonna show you something with a pack of cards. Uh, can you help me? Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, I've got 52 cards. They're all there. They're all different. Yeah. Now, before I start anything, I'm going to take these cards and give them a really good shuffle. Let me just give these cards a mix-up because I don't want you saying later on, well, the trick was pretty good, but Craig didn't shuffle the cards beforehand. So I'm going to give the cards a shuffle. Okay. Now, you're going to pick a card. So as I go through, say stop. Stop. Lovely. Have a look at that card. Do not show me. I don't want to know what it is, but it's important that everyone else sees the card. So make sure that everyone can see it. Yeah. And when you've done that, let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, put the card back there. Is that cool? Yeah, it's fine. So somewhere in here is your card. Yeah. Um, I'm going to find your card. That's obviously what I'm going to do. But before I do, I'm going to show you something even more impressive than finding your card. I'm going to divide the deck into approximately three equal piles. It doesn't have to be perfect, but about as close as we can get. Three equal piles. Now, the thing is, I don't know where your card is set. It could be absolutely anywhere. It could be in this middle pile here. It could be in that pile. It could be that pile. I really don't know. Your card's not the 10 of spades, is it? No. Okay, so that's like one down, 51 to go. I know, but I know it's somewhere. I just, I just don't know where. Okay. So before I find your card, I'm going to show you something really crazy. I'm going to take this packet and this packet, and I'm going to turn it face up, okay? Yeah. Uh, so we've got two packets face up, one packet face down, and there's a reason for that. And the reason is I'm going to show you the craziest transposition in the world. Now, when magicians talk about transpositions, they talk about two objects changing places. Uh, normally, you'd have a card there and a card there, and they'd change places, and that's a transposition. I'm going to show you a crazy transposition, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two packets and I'm going to shuffle them face up into face down and I've just realized that I'm the worst shuffler in the world. <laughs> Let me try it this way. Let me not try and do it right-handed. There we go. That's better. So I'm going to take these cards yeah. and shuffle them face up into face down. Okay. So you, now you can see there's face up cards, there's face down cards. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, all, they're all mixed up, right? Is that fair? Yeah. Um, cards shuffle face up into face down. And then obviously this packet over here is the normal packet. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. But I'm going to show you a transposition, not of two objects, but the condition of two objects. I'm going to make the condition of two packets of cards change places. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take one of these cards that are face up, face down, the Ten of Spades. That's not your card, is it? No. No. And I'm going to put it over here. Right. 
And that makes the condition of the cards change places. I know that sounds crazy, but if I wait three seconds, check this out. These cards were shuffled face up into face down. Now they're all facing the right way. Huh? I know, isn't that weird? Do you see your card there? No. No? But what's even stranger is now these cards were all perfectly normal, and now these cards were all shuffled face up into face down. Right. Isn't that weird, the condition of the yeah, cards change places? Card. Uh, but I said I was going to try and find your card. Is that your card or any of these face-up cards no, your I card? I see it in those ones. Okay, so none of these cards are your card. And none of these cards are your card. So it means that your card is one of the, uh, the face-down cards here. Uh, by process of elimination, let's find it. Is it five of spades? No. Eight of clubs? No. Ten of diamonds? No. Ace? No. Four? Ace of clubs? Four of clubs? No. King of hearts? No. Eight of spades? Jack no. of diamonds? No. Well, hang on a minute. That means your card yeah. has disappeared. That means your card's gone. It's gone from the deck. So not only have we made the condition of a pack of cards change places, we've also gone one step further and made your card disappear. You've lost my card. Well, the only way to bring it back would be to use magic. You see, look, if I do this and this, do you know what that does? No. Absolutely nothing. It's when I snap my fingers. That's right. when it works. Because now every single card is still face down, but there's one card that's face card. up right there in the middle. And that would be your card. The Ace of Diamonds. So the next routine we're going to be looking at is Facelift. Now, this was published in 1979, and it's a routine created by Paul Harris and Alan Ackerman. And it's basically, when you read the description of this in the book, or you look at it in The Art of Astonishments, and, and you read the description, it's quite complicated, it's quite convoluted as to what's going on, and it involves making a prediction, and then the prediction vanishing, and then reappearing, and it kind of, I remember the first time I read this, it didn't make any sense to me, it's kind of like, I don't really get what's going on, it's just a lot of magical moments that are kind of strung together for no reason, and, and when this really kind of started working for me, was when I put a presentation together that made sense of it, so when I perform this, I actually talk about how, uh, if you've got a deck of cards, and they've got two black jacks that's going to empower you to be able to, to you for you to do lots and lots of magic because these jacks can do anything let me show you what i mean and then i i go into the routine now change the ending slightly i've added a false cut as a production and a double lift because that kind of fitted with my presentation but 95 percent of this is paul harris and it's a perfect example again of the routining that paul harris puts together in his tricks and what i mean by that is there's a sequence in there where where you vanish a card in between two jacks and you really haven't vanished it really you're holding a double and you you're kind of doing that flicky move that paul harris uses a lot i'm sure it's not called the flicky move but i, I think of it as the flicky move but then a second later you grab another card and now you actually do another vanish and it looks like the same thing but now you're not holding a double and it's the perfect example of routining and structure behind paul harris routines um so if you're looking for a really commercial effect a lot of people have overlooked this particular routine and it's a real shame that they have because it is super commercial. It's very quick, it's very visual, you don't need a table, there's a lot of magic happening. Um, there's vanishes, there's reproductions, there's changes and it's over in a couple of minutes. So hopefully people watching this will uh, go and check it out and if you do, I think you'll find a, a trick here that you really like. Right, so I'm going to show you a trick with a pack of cards. Okay. Uh, this one is called Facelift. And uh, this, this, you know what? You know, magicians normally have to spend years learning how to do card magic, right? Right. Do you want to know how you can learn how to do card magic very, very easily with no practice and no skill? Go on, then. Just make sure that you get a deck of cards that has two black jacks in it. Now, every deck of cards has two black jacks in it, but if you use the black jacks, they are the most magical cards in the deck. It will give you the ability to do amazing magic, even though you have no skill at all. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to prove it to you. Yeah. These jacks do so many things. It's, a, it's almost like having a toolbox in your, in your deck of cards. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, we'll take a, a prediction card. Uh, it doesn't matter which it is, so we just put that one there. We're going to put one card at random in between the jacks, and we're going to leave them on top of the deck. Okay? Yeah. Now, you're going to grab a card. Uh, just take a card for me, any card that you want to. And show the camera. Do not show me. Now, that card would normally be signed, but uh, would you mind if we didn't sign it? Because the pen's all the way over there. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> I can't be bothered. But uh, 
your card's going to go about halfway down. Roughly how many cards down in the deck would you say that card is? Yeah, about halfway. About halfway. Now, do you remember that before we did anything, we put a uh, a prediction card right here in between the uh, in between the two jacks. We put a prediction card, yeah? Yeah. Because that card was in between the two jacks, if I snap my fingers, it will actually turn into the card that right. you picked. Was that your card? You picked a jack as well. How weird is that? I did, yeah. <laughs> but, but that's not the only thing that the jacks do. Look, if I put your card in between the two black jacks and I give a little twist, it actually goes one step further. It makes that jack that you picked completely disappear from in between the two black jacks. Now, maybe you missed that. I'll do that again for you. You're not really meant to repeat a trick, but I will. We'll take a different card. We'll take this one here, the 10 of diamonds. Are you happy with that one? Yeah. I'm going to pop the 10 right here in between the two black jacks. So we have the uh, the jack of clubs on the bottom, we have the jack of spades on the top, and in the middle we have your the, the ten of diamonds. Right. Now look, it works exactly the same way. All I do is this, and when I do, that ten of diamonds disappears completely without leaving a trace. Right. Honestly, you can do so much with the jacks if, if you just... Where's gone? Where's the card gone? Yeah. Well, it's easy to find. All I have to do is give the deck a fancy cut like this. If I give the deck a fancy cut, I mean, you, you, that's just pure skill. You don't need you, you don't need the jacks for that. I should be able to find the uh, the ten of diamonds. You see, it's back. But that's not the card you picked. The card you picked was the jack of diamonds. So if I put that ten of diamonds in the middle of the two jacks and I snap my fingers, what happens is that card turns back into the jack of diamonds, and uh, and that's how you do magic with a deck of cards. You just need to grab yourself the two black jacks. Okay, so the next routine we're going to be looking at is Drop Shot, and this was also published in 1979, and uh, it can be found in The Art of Astonishment, Volume 2. Um, now, this particular routine is, I want to include it in this because it's quite unique. If you actually read it up in The Art of Astonishment, you'll see that Paul talks about how this is the world's first self-working palm and he's actually right it is the world's first self-working palm the way that this routine is constructed allows you to palm bottom palm a card with no moves at all which is one of the reasons why i want to draw it to your attention the actual trick itself is really quite strong when you read it you kind of think oh that that's a bit of filler but it's not filler i've done this in in restaurants using people's glasses all of the time and it gets a great reaction basically what you have here is you have a card that someone freely picks they can sign it if they want to and you tear the corner off and they can even sign the corner you then put that piece away you take the rest of the card you cut it into the middle of the deck you put the deck on top of the glass and and what happens is you say you're going to make the card penetrate down into the glass but the piece penetrates into the glass and then the cards in the pocket so you've got like a, a double uh, transposition along with a penetration and because you've set the audience up for thinking that the card's going to come through when the corner visibly drops into the glass it's a real amazing moment that they don't expect and it creates a wonderful offbeat that allows you to then do the move which allows you to go into the pocket and get the card and i can't stress this enough it's a self working palm because of how the card is uh because of the corner that's been torn off you literally just have to pick the deck up and put it on the table and the card palms itself you don't have to do anything now i've never seen this used anywhere else in print by anybody at all and i think it's a real shame because this principle and this is a principle this principle can be applied to a lot of other card magic and what i'd love you guys to do is in the comments if you've actually seen this self-working palming principle being used anywhere else please let me know because i've never seen it used anywhere else and that's one of the reasons that i wanted to draw your attention to this because i'd love you guys to have a look at this if you haven't seen it before learn it and maybe there's ways that we can apply this to uh, to other magic as well but there you go that's what this routine is it is super Super commercial again it's another example of wonderful paul harris thinking you're setting them up they're thinking that something is happening and then all of a sudden that moment becomes even stronger because what they're expecting to see happen doesn't happen and instead something happens that becomes even stronger and it's kind of weird to combine a penetration and a transposition but it works in this routine and it works really well and as i say it creates a wonderful offbeat that allows you to do this self-working palm to then reach in and take the actual card that they picked out of their pocket so there you go it's called drop shot um paul harris credits matt shulin for the inspiration check it out right so sarah you're going to help me out with another trick is that okay yeah 
There we go, 52 cards. Uh, I'll give them a shuffle before we start, and you are going to have a completely free choice of playing card. Okay. So I'm going to spread the cards out face up on the table so you can see them. Which card would you like? Three of hearts. Right there in the middle. Yeah. Right there in the middle. Now you could sign that card if you want to. I can't be bothered with getting a pen, so we'll just pretend that I am lazy. It's true. It's true. Uh, so instead, I'm going to just tear the corner off this card, okay? Um, hopefully you can see that. Can you yes. see that? I'm going to pop that into my pocket. I'm going to get back to it a little bit later. It's not really about the torn corner. That's not important. What's important is the, uh, is the deck of cards. Okay. And specifically the card that you picked, the three of hearts. Now I'm going to cut that card into the middle of the deck. And it's important that uh, I don't know where it is, so I'm gonna give the cards a few cuts, make sure that card is completely mixed. Is that fair? Yeah. So now I, I'm gonna try and do something incredible with this deck of cards, with your cards somewhere in the middle of the deck. What I'm gonna do, this pint glass, right? Yeah. And if you're working in a bar or a restaurant, you can actually do this in a bar or a restaurant with a borrowed pint glass. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the deck of cards right there. Now, somewhere in here is your card. I'm going to try and cause your card to drop down into the glass. Can you, can you see that on there? Yeah? yeah. Watch. One. I'm just going to push down. One, two, three. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on a second. Hang on a minute. That can't be right. That's not. That's, that's the corner. Hang on. That's the corner that I put in my pocket. Which means if the corner is now there and that's dropped into the glass, that means in my pocket, I actually have the card that was cut in the deck and the corner matches exactly. Okay, so the next routine I want to perform for you is called Silver Slide, which is a routine that uses coins and cards. And a lot of people forget that Paul Harris has created some amazing off-the-wall coin magic. Because he's so prolific with playing cards, people forget what he's done with coins, but some coin routines he's created are wonderful. Silver Slide is a great production of a four of a kind. Now, I'm going to perform it for you in a minute. I've already shot the performance. I'm going to perform it for you in a second. And I'm going to use silver dollars, mainly because I haven't got half dollars with me. I've only got silver dollars. And uh, I, to be honest, I'm used to using silver dollars anyway. But I want to point something out. Sarah's sitting behind the camera right now, so she can and she can you, you'll be able to hear her and she can speak but she's seen a lot of magic she's seen a lot of coin magic she'd never seen this routine before a lot a lot <laughs> and you'd never seen this routine before and when i uh when i did the thing at the end where there were four coins there you just didn't even see that coming did you like no. you were you were like oh i was expecting maybe one or maybe two but and that's the beautiful thing of this routine it's a great four of a kind production using what the audience thinks is just one coin. Now, there's been versions of this before where you're holding out four coins and, and uh, you're, you're uh, you know, like loading them from palm. But that's not what you're doing here because of the construction of the routine. And again, I keep coming back to that word construction and routining, but that's kind of, for me, what embodies a Paul Harris routine. But because of the construction of this routine, it's actually not that difficult. Um, you, you start off with, uh, with a couple of coins in finger palm. You don't even use classic palm at any point in the routine. And you're getting so far ahead. Now, obviously, the negative idea is you are going to need a soft service. It doesn't necessarily have to be a close-up pad. It could be like a bar towel in a bar or something like that. But you are going to need a soft surface. And I would like to point out, normally when I do these Paul Harris routines, I do like to perform them exactly as Paul does. And if I change them, I let you know. I did change the handling slightly at the beginning. Um, just because what Paul does is he just kind of like a flashy thing where he gets the four aces out of the deck. I, I never got on with that. It just didn't work for me. So instead, I kind of do a more of a deliberate lay down procedure. That's the only other thing I've changed. Everything else is routine exactly the same. Now, I have got versions of this that I've created and been inspired to create based off this Paul Harris routine. But the original is still absolutely amazing. And as I say, the strength behind this is nobody sees the four of a kind production coming. They think you're just vanishing a coin and it appears underneath the card that they name. And then when you've got that moment and all the other coins appear, it's great. So if you're learning coin magic, this is a great coin routine to learn uh, because no classic palm is needed. It's not very difficult. It's really, really impressive. Um, so check it out. It's called Silver Slide. You can learn it from Art of Astonishment. So Sarah, uh, I'm going to get you to help me with the trick. Now, I know I'm holding a deck of cards, but this is not a card trick. 
Okay. Uh, I'm just going to need some cards to do the trick. There's a difference between needing some cards to do a trick and doing a card trick. Now, I need four cards in total. I'm not going to ask you to remember these cards. because I won't remember four. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't, you don't, you don't <laughs> have to. That's, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to remember them. That's absolutely fine. But I'm going to take four cards and uh, we're going to pop them here on the table. Okay? Yeah. Now, the important thing is not the cards. The important right. thing is this over here, this little purse. Because inside this little purse, I have a coin. And that's what I mean. This is not a card trick. This is actually a coin trick. Now, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it is. You see, I can't do the trick that I'm about to show you without using the cards. And you'll see what I mean in a second. This is a Morgan Silver Dollar. This is a beautiful old coin. And before I do anything, I want you to notice one thing, which is the coin fits nice and neatly underneath the card, right? Yeah. Now, that's going to become important a little bit. Oh, there you go. Jumped out my hand. I did that with the power of my mind. I hope you're impressed. Um, so I'm going to make these get this coin disappear, and that's what the cards are here for. You see, if I just put the coin in my hand and snap my fingers, nothing will happen. I could snap my fingers until the cows come home. Nothing could happen. But it is possible to make this coin disappear using a playing card. You see, if I take this card and just wave it over the fist, I can make this coin disappear. It doesn't matter which of the cards I use. Sometimes it doesn't work, which I have more than one. But all I have to do is wave that card over my fist. And when I do, that coin completely disappears. That's not bad, right? Yeah. The question is, where does it go? And I'll tell you right now, it's going to appear underneath one of the cards. And you get to choose which one. That's card number one, card number two, card number three, card number four. Which one do you want it to appear under? Uh, three. Three, this, that, uh, that one there? Yeah. So if I told you it was under three, would that be good? Yeah. Look, all I have to do is snap my fingers and it's underneath number three. What? Which is pretty good, but I know what you're thinking. You're thinking what would have happened if you'd said one, two, or four? Well, to be honest, I had that covered as well. Uh, that's one, two, three, four silver dollars. So the final routine I want to share with you is Reset by Paul Harris. Now, probably this is at this point the most iconic Paul Harris routine there is, partly because Michael Lamar has performed it in his Easy to Master Card Magic series, which brought it out to a whole bunch of people that might not have been aware of Paul Harris, but also because there's been some amazing versions of this in, you know, Reswindled is amazing. Uh, uh, there's, there's some great versions in, in uh, variations. There's so many, Greg Wilson, in uh, Pyrotechnic Pasteboards had a great version of it. And because so many people have created their, their own version of this, um, it, it, it's, it's probably the most well-known Paul Harris trick there is. Now, the way that I do it is slightly different to how Paul originally wrote it up. I use um, a display at the beginning that's more in line with uh, the routine out of variations. However, um, the plot and 90% of the handling is all Paul Harris. And it's such an incredible routine. If you're into packet tricks, it's great because it's a regular deck of cards. You just take four jacks out, you take four aces out. There's no gimmicks, there's no extras. You don't need a table, you can do it in the spectator's hands. And it is a really engaging plot because you, you've told them what you're going to do. You then proceed to do it one at a time. As each card changes uh, into a jack, it becomes more impressive. And then you've got that wonderful kickback at the end where the uh, the aces return and the jacks are back over there. I've, I've held off from doing this in these Paul Harris specials because I want to try and perform magic in the Paul Harris specials that you might not have seen before. And I want to bring to your attention magic that Paul has created that you might not have seen. Because let's be honest, his books especially the Three Arts of Astonishment books. There is so much material in there. It is very easy to gloss over stuff thinking it's no good until you actually see it performed. And there's a lot of Paul's material that isn't performed. So my goal is to try and perform stuff that people haven't seen before, to try and encourage them to learn these routines out of his books. Having said that, I also want to make this video series a um, kind of celebration of Paul's uh, career in magic and, and, and the stuff he's created. And you can't do that without talking about reset. So that's why I'm going to be performing it for you now. I have done this probably longer than any other Paul Harris trick other than maybe PDQ coins across. It's, um, yeah, like I said before, it is incredibly commercial. You can get into it any time you want to. It makes a great transition piece that you can go into different routines with. If you're a packet trick fan, it's a great packet trick, but using regular cards it's just a wonderful routine. So um, I'm going to perform it for you right now. If you haven't seen it, you're in for a treat because Reset is great. If you have seen it, let me know what you think in the comments. 
Right, so I'm going to show you something with just eight cards. I've taken the jacks and the aces out of the deck. I'm just going to do something with the four jacks. I'm going to do something with the four aces, eight cards all together. I'm going to make all of your dreams come true right now, Sarah. You I'm are? Gonna, yeah, I am. Every single dream you've ever had, I'm going to make it come true. Because I'm going to teach. Well, I'm going to teach you how to make cards change places. Let's oh. be honest. This is something that you've dreamt of forever. Um, you want to be a real magician. Uh, Now's your chance. Um, we need to reevaluate <laughs> my dreams. <laughs> Well, this is the this is the, the wish that I'm granting right now. Right. Okay. Um, so we have the four jacks, we have the four aces. Now, in order for you to understand how incredible this is, you have to try and keep track of where the cards are. So the four jacks, what I want to do is I'm going to pop them over there. And can you keep an eye on those four jacks for me? Would that be yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah. Very good. But to be honest, you also need to watch the aces. And the reason is it's the, the, the magic is actually going to be happening over here with the aces. And we're going to start off with this ace here. Watch. All I have to do is snap and when i do that first ace changes places with one of the jacks mm -hmm. now you might have missed it so i'm going to do it again this time i'll use the two black aces so watch we've got the uh, the clubs and the spades watch the clubs if i just cover it up for a split second that one changes as well mm -hmm. so we've now got two aces that have turned into jacks mm -hmm. that leaves us with uh with two cards to go and i tell you what i'm going to make this really difficult for myself by doing both of these at the same time Watch, if I just do this, that's when that one goes and that one goes. And now, over here, we have the four jacks. They've changed places. Of course, what you don't realize is there's a reset button right there in the center of the cards. And when I press the reset button, it resets everything. And when I mean it resets everything, I mean it because now over here, we've got the four aces again. We did have the four jacks, now we've got the four aces. And the reason is, over here where the jacks were right from the very beginning. That's what we've got. We've got the four jacks again. Over here are the four jacks. Over there are the four aces. That's a one, two, three, four jacks. One, two, three, four aces. And you can check out everything. So there you go, guys. That is Paul Harris video number three in the bag. I hope you enjoyed it. There's some amazing material in this particular Paul Harris uh, video. Some really good stuff. The the Triumph in particular, I love. And who doesn't like uh, doesn't like resets? Uh, guys, do me a favor. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. It takes a lot of time and effort to put these videos together. So if you do want to see a fourth Paul Harris video please let me know and I'll start doing the research and I'll do a fourth one. Uh, outside of that, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this on the channel, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment down below. And I'm going to be back again tomorrow with a short at two o'clock, a live at six o'clock and at nine o'clock, we are going to have a talk magic. I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic. Yeah.